Cool. Hello. Welcome to the Future Podcast. Hey, Great. guys. Uh, Hi. We've got a special day today, and we're joined with, by Zumi. Zumi Hello. Kennedy, yeah. um, who we've seen and met, <laughs> but we're going to be talking all together. Raising the bar a little bit in this podcast panel. Cool. That's it. I think the, yeah. the feedback we were getting is we need more <laughs> Zumi. Just to be. a little bit less of the boys and more of the girls was, was the feedback. Um, um, we received that. Also, a bit of the feedback was, Tim, too much black shirt, um, time to mix it up a little bit. So uh, I'm really enjoying the blue shirt today, mate. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I do my best yeah. for the podcast. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing, Azumi? Good. Feeling good? <laughs> good. good. Nice to have you. Yeah. Yeah, great. Well, today, today we're going to be talking. <laughs> are you nervous or something? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> just relaxing. That's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, just relax. We're just going to be having a... A chat today and today's topic we're going to be talking about um generosity specifically maybe redefining generosity which sounds big but is, is exciting so let's let's start there what does that mean um so redefining generosity um what how would you define kennedy's he's involved too uh, how would you define generosity yeah so um generosity is a really important thing for us <clears throat> i feel like it's a, it's a foundational concept for our church um, but maybe not in the way that it has been taught necessarily. Not, not that it's been taught wrong, but I, I feel like it's much a bigger concept and a more foundational concept than maybe um, well, certainly I first realized as I've been studying God's Word and exp- all the experiences that I've had with God. I feel like generosity has, has played a huge part in shaping my life and my formation towards becoming more like Jesus. And and so really, um, I guess one of the, the key scriptures for me when it came to um, defining what is generosity was from Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, when it's a ministry moment where Jesus mm. sends out the 12 and later sends out the 72. And he gives them these incredible, like, big responsibilities to do. And it can kind of seem a little bit, like, intimidating, right? When you send someone out and you say this, you say, heal the sick, raise the dead. I mean... I'm yet to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done it yet, but hey, I'm willing to pray yeah. and and cleanse those who have leprosy, drive mm. out demons, mm. and then you can almost like see the the disciples' faces, like just like, what are we going to do? <laughs> How are we going to do this, Jesus? And then yeah. he kind of gives them a little how to, and it's just a one liner, which I feel really sums up generosity. And it says this: it says, "Freely you've received, now freely give." Yeah. And I feel like that is so much the foundation of how we feel about leadership is leadership is simply giving what you've received. It's not trying to be something that you're not or manufacture something that you haven't got. It's just whatever you've received from God, just start freely giving that. And more fundamentally, as a Christian, this is how we live our lives, is what we've received from God, just give that. So it's not about um, church, be more generous. Um, People in church, be more generous, give more money to the church. That's not what generosity is about, okay? Generosity is much more fundamental and much more foundational to a Christian life than that. It really is whatever I've received from God, be willing to share that with others and be willing to overflow in all kinds of areas of my life. So really the the generosity comes from a, a heart from God for others. It's a heart for others. Yeah, I get. I love that. I love that definition. Mm-hmm. And it's so broad. It's not, I think... I, myself, whenever I heard the word generosity, I, my brain always went to money. Right. If you're generous, it means finance, giving, tithing, all that stuff. Yeah. Have you got uh, one of those friends that always forgets their wallet when you go out for dinner and stuff like that? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Aussie yeah. hucker. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, where's my wallet? Sorry, guys. <laughs> we both have one of those friends. And, we do. Uh, <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I love this just broader concept of, what generosity is and it's it encompasses everything in the christian life really um and really exciting so um could you speak to i love what you said firstly freely as you received so we have to be able to receive to be able to freely give yeah um can you talk about some instances in your life or both your lives where you've maybe some key moments where you've received some generosity in something and it's really impacted the way you think about i mean there's so many different facets of this um but yeah yeah impacted your thinking on generosity yeah definitely do you want to jump in jump 
Yeah, like when I think about my wife. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Love you. Yeah, um, so key moments. I think it, besides the finance part, that I had a moment that、um, I received some kind of big encouragement.、Um, actually, I, I remember some moments from Luke before we got married. <laughs> like、um, mm. the time that I was feeling not really confident in myself, and I was just a new Christian, passionate about God, but I, I wasn't really sure of vision and things. And then I remember Luke telling me that, believing in me and saying, I believe that you're going to become an amazing leader, and, and、um, I can see that. And it was like more spe- specific what you said to me. But I don't even remember <laughs> this actually. Was this、but、before you were dating? Yeah, yeah. before we, we were, were dating. When we were just years、friends. before we were dating. Yeah, when,、okay. yeah, when we just,、uh, just met a few months ago. You were an amazing translator, <laughs> like incredible yeah, translator. Yeah, I was also translating too. And、yeah. I just, yeah, I guess just really saw you're going to be an amazing leader. Yeah, it was, it was kind of biblical because in the Bible, like, you know, like God speaks to them before they become warrior or like world changers. And I, I had that same moment with you, believe in me. And、uh, yeah, like that, that kind of key moments I received, like words, words of encouragement.、Um, yeah, just like sometimes a verse or yeah, some kind of encouragement. Really,、yeah. I feel like that's the generosity I received from some people. So, yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love、mm. that encouragement example. This is such a big thing. Like, I feel like encouragement is really an act of generosity.、Mm. Like, you see it in other people, you see good things, you could easily hold it back. That's called stinginess, right? But when you l- let it go, when you let your words go to, to other people, you just, or, I'm always surprised about the impact that it has on people. Like, what is just words, it's just like pretty simple. It comes from my heart, but it's really, it's not that big of a deal. To encourage somebody. But to them, it's actually, it is a big deal. Like the right word at the right time, the Bible、mm-hmm. says, is, is really powerful. And so I just think we can't underestimate the, the fact that we've, been rece- we've received encouragement. Now we want to give it.、Mm. Yeah, love that. Great. So、yeah. being, we want to be a church that's generous with our words, which means generous with encouragement and、yeah. not, just, not just fluff, but like specific. Right. <laughs> like right. really sewing into. People's lives. Like, I、yeah. like that what you said about Izumi. What、like、about you? Have you s- seen something like that? Oh, for sure. Yeah, definitely. I've been encouraged so many times to s- just to step up in the right area. And I've been obviously, I mean, we've been leading together for 15 years now. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and、um, yeah, you always encouraged me to、um, go out. You sent me and my wife, Kazue, out into Kobe, another city, <laughs> pretty much out of your church. And that was probably a key. Moment where, yeah, again, someone, older Christian leader, believing in me and encouraging me, saying, okay, you can do this. A couple years older. Like, <laughs> little, little <laughs> 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 Feels like a lot older. Oh, yeah, f- probably true, yeah. <laughs>、um, and yeah, just like that, that was, but that was huge. You know?、yeah. And I think, I think that whole age thing、um, doesn't matter、mm. when it's from God and like a younger person. Anyone can encourage anyone. And I'd love to be a part of a church where it doesn't matter. Who that person is, but we can sow in words of encouragement and life. Good. So, so I guess we're saying that this is a kingdom principle, really. Like、yeah. generosity is not just like being generous, giving to your favorite charity, which is really awesome,、um, but how it's so interconnected and entwined with the gospel.、Um, could you paint like more、right. of a picture of how this is just the heart of God for us as Christians to carry that generous spirit? Right. Well, I think if you look at Jesus' life, You see, his teaching is so much about trying to get people to be,、um, to, to live in the kingdom of God.、Mm. And so much of his concepts are about giving. It's not just giving finance, but it's about giving forgiveness. Forgiveness is a huge part、mm. of generosity, guys.、Yeah. You could easily hold it back, but to, to release freely people,、um, release people into having another chance, release people into. Um, into no judgment, into、um, their future,、um, release people into another opportunity to change. It's generous. It's the generous response when people hurt you to forgive. And Jesus said this about even when he talked about when you get treated badly by the Roman soldiers and they were in a, in a, in a particular situation that Jesus told us in. Um, where they were having a tough time. They were, talk about government overreach. Like they, they were living in constant government overreach. And,、sure. and Jesus' response to them was, Bless the people who hurt you the most. 
Yeah. This is not normal. This is the kingdom of God. Yeah. And by showing people the kingdom of God, this is the only way that things are going to change. It's not going to come through political revolution. That is what Jesus that is not how Jesus came or that that's what people wanted. They, there was a lot of pressure on Jesus to be a political leader. He oh. was not. Mm. Okay? Now, he's he's now if you're in politics, we're going to I'm I'm just so pumped for you if you feel God's called to do that. Mm. And there is a voice for you to have in the kingdom of God. Um, There was many, we could go through many examples of that in the Bible, including Joseph in the Old Testament, an an incredible political leader. But Jesus came for a spiritual revolution of his people and us more broadly. And, And part of that was the way that you're responding to people hurting you is making things worse. Yeah. And we need to learn how to respond differently if we want change. And it's not going to be the world's way. It's going to be the kingdom way. It's not going to be the stingy way. It's going to be the generous way. And if we want people to change around, if we want culture to change around us, it's going to start with us. It's going to start with the church. And it's going to start with us being generous, us freely giving what we've freely received and stop focusing on ourselves only, but let it flow out. And I think this is a, this is a huge part of the gospel is it was never meant to keep it to ourselves. And if we think about the concept of grace, so if you just allow me to just preach just for a moment here. Oh, no, we, um, we used to it. Hey. Uh, <laughs> the concept of grace is so mm. powerful. Mm. You know, uh, you know our, our old pastor, um, Rod Plummer, often shared this and so wonderfully um, talked about that the word cut is for grace in the Bible. And there's, there's a couple of words that go alongside that. One is, is kata, which is, means joy. It's the same root word. And there's another one, charisma, which is the thing of joy, which is actually what we translate the word gifting into. Mm. So these three concepts go together, joy, grace, and gifting, or the thing of or, or the thing of grace, the, the, what grace produces yeah. is the gifting. So yeah. it's kind of like this, the old people, um, there was paintings about this in the early church, was they called it the dance of grace, and it was these three people dancing together in a circle holding hands, just like we are today dan- mm. dancing around this table. <laughs> we could do a little example if you wanted. <laughs> Is that me? You want up for a dance? No, no? there's no space. In there. um, and it's like this, this repeat, so I mm. receive God's grace, God's grace changes my heart, and then it overflows in gifting. Then I receive more of God's grace, and it changes my heart, and I overflow with gifting. Yeah. Can you see... This picture is a beautiful picture of how the gospel is meant to work. It's meant to be received, changed, and and pushed out. This is the this is what I mean when I say that generosity is foundational to the gospel. You could yeah. even say that, that that generosity is foundational to the word love. Love is about yeah. giving. Yes. You cannot give if you don't have a generous heart. Mm-hmm. And even those people who don't know Jesus don't know the kingdom, but they are generous to others. They are blessed because they experience something of the kingdom of God, even though they don't even know the kingdom of God. Yeah, kingdom principle. It's incredible. Mm. Definitely. Yeah, no, I love that. And I love that charisma, meaning it's not about those gifts are not for me, but it's when we are generous with the grace God's placed in our life. Wow. Those giftings yeah. to other people, that's yeah. when that's when I think we see like real fulfillment and real right. impact in the world. And and I think that's so true. God has gifted. So you could so be stingy people. with your gift. You get yeah, totally. Yeah, right. And just make, I mean. We see this in church, right? Definitely. Definitely. Build your own platform and build something even outside of church. That's just for me. But I think God has placed those in our life to help people in a bunch of different ways. Right. And when we yeah. talk about church, we're talking really talking about us together. We're talking about the community of mm. faith. Mm. How are you using your gift to bless the community of faith? Mm. Yeah, I mean, this is it, it's it's so f- um, fundamental to how church works. That yes. I'm sure every person listening to this today, you've got gifts that are not being fully being generous, being generously used. Mm. Whether that's because you're afraid of it, mm. or you don't feel like you're good enough, mm. or, or whatever it is, but the end mm. result is other people are not being blessed mm. with your with your generosity. Because you're holding back, and I just, I just think, um, I just encourage people, man, be generous with your gift. Yeah, definitely, and I guess yeah, serve in a place where hopefully you get an opportunity to use your gifting and um, get the chance to 
really help help people and bless people. But yeah, I love that picture. Yeah, mm. so but it, I guess every Christian we've all re- received yeah. God's yeah, grace. We have, and it's every person has received something. So every person has something to give, and I think that's step one. Um, Definitely, <laughs> like even yeah. if it's a little, even if it's a little bit, um, we have something to give today. about key moments of like um like life change and generosity i remember the time that you went to um you went to america and when you came back i just felt something was really something really impacted your life and you were seeing things in a different way um do you remember that time yeah definitely so one of our great french churches river valley church in minnesota um amazing crew there uh they had brought some teams to japan and i guess it it, it sort of started in me there they have an incredible culture of generosity in their church where they're, they're literally just giving away millions of dollars every year um, into mm. the world, into missions, Jeez, yeah. um, have a massive heart for others. Mm. And I, I'm not sure, but it's I, I think their budget that they give outside of their church is, is larger than their budget for their church. Wow, that's pretty it's, cool. it's something like that. And it's, okay. it's just pretty crazy. Wow. Um, I think this year they just gave away $8.6 million dollars. Wow. Um, intermissions. Awesome. And it's just this unbelievable place. And you can hear that and you can think, okay, maybe that's just like a, a small group of people or a leadership thing. But I went into the church and people were just living and breathing generosity. Um, I had not experienced something like that before where every conversation you could just feel, it was just like dripping with generosity. Mm. The encouragement culture Two things really impacted me from River Valley Church at that time, and I felt it was, I was like a God, God encounter. It was just like God was trying to fill in some gaps in my life. And one of them was encouragement, just how encouraging the culture was, and then seeing how many incredible young leaders they had. I, I, I kind of felt like God was saying, these, these, are the, these are the things that are going together here. They're believing in people. They're encouraging people. They're generous with the words. And then I heard, I started having conversations with tens of people just in hallways and corridors and whatever. And every person that I talked to was talking about being generous to others and talking about um, giving to missions, what they were excited about with missions. Mm. And I, I started to like one by one, it started like clicking for me. Mm. This is not like a senior pastor thing or like a, a leadership thing. This was like literally just people in the just average, normal people in church. Like people in the hallways, people at the kids' check-in that I was talking to mm. were talking about missions and giving and being focused on others. And it kind of just made such a deep impact on me that I came back and we had this conversation, right? Yeah, I remember. And I think it was basically the start of me wanting to plant a church. Yeah, so that has helped like what kind of church you want to see in Brisbane and yeah. Big time, yeah. Mm. Did like, you see that change in Luke? Is yeah, like yeah. He was, yeah, he was, I don't know, it was like like that fish scale coming of eye moment. Right. Um, like really, um, he was saying like he felt like the pieces of puzzles were finally coming together of what he wants to see in uh, the church, future church. And yeah, yeah. so that was, that was really good. And that impacted me too because I, I can feel like he wants to become generous and all the stories I heard was very exciting. It's exciting for me too. And I thought, uh, yeah, I want to become like, uh, I want to have that generosity too. So, yeah. Definitely, mm. definitely. Yeah. Um, so, th- that's a good question. How, if someone wants to become generous, w- what's a good place to start? Because concepts are great, but I think a lot of us need practices mm. to learn how do I become like Jesus. Practices really help. Now, we don't worship practices or we don't like... Mm idolize practices but they do help us become like our like what we're trying to do is become like jesus okay yes, yes. so there's some things that help with that they're not the main thing jesus is the main thing mm. but there's some things that help and it puts skin on concepts for us so 
let's just talk about some of those concepts. Like what, what are some of the things that help us in, if we want to take steps in becoming more generous? Yeah, I mean, great. I think there's a bunch of different things I can think of. But first, we need the foundation of receiving from God, right. personally. So um, putting, and the great thing about God is like the closer I get to God, you know, the more he it opens up my life to be changed by him. Yeah. And yeah. I think the very first step is just getting back to receiving from God. Um, and that's not the end goal, but that's just the first step. And um, I love yeah. Matthew 6, 33. Um, is, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. All these things will be given to you as well. Right. And that scripture, that's the scripture that really impacted me. And I remember you shared that at your wedding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know that. why. I remember that. And it's it really true. stuck with me. I was like, oh, that's <laughs> um, just a great, powerful way to live life. Is like, okay, first step, put God first. And I think once we start receiving from God, putting him first, we're going to get full and everything is going to flow from that. So that's what I've seen. Like the first step to be being generous needs to be, you need to have a full heart. Yeah. And you don't have to, I think. But yeah. It's yeah. also like understanding that everything I have comes from God. Yes. So yeah. I love this in First Chronicles 29, verse 14. Um, this is David. And he's just got such a humble heart. He's so generous. Mm. He's so humble, which often goes together. He says, but who am I? And who are my people? that we should be able to give as generously as this. Everything comes from you. This is his prayer. And we have given you only what comes from your hand. Like it's just this revelation. Like people talk about like giving money, right? Mm. But it starts with, a, with the, just this fundamental revelation of everything I have comes from God. So let's just start with that point. Mm. I am able to give because I have whatever I have. It's already from God. Yeah. Now I need to focus on learning how to freely, uh, freely, uh, freely give rather than um, stingily hold. It's true. Yeah. And I think even if it's like really small, sometimes we feel like it's so small that we don't want to. Right. This is almost meaningless. Right. <laughs> like we started off this conversation with encouragement. Yeah. And sometimes we don't encourage because we feel like, oh, everybody's thinking it or, or they already know it. It's like that really small thing. Yeah. But I think that really small thing is the first step and it, it's something that grows like generosity is something that grows the more you do it it sure and does yeah. i think yeah i think that i love that i just like <laughs> starting to just starting with the smallest thing that you've received that little thing which everybody has received from god mm. and like just finding someone come on and i think i've always tried to think who can i encourage today or if i ever meet up with someone can i at least do one thing that encourages them right and i think that's a great place to start if you want to be generous, it's just like, okay, right. I'm going to meet my mum today. <laughs> how can I, how can I just, what could I do that would encourage her today? Yeah. Um, but I love that what you're doing there, Tim, is you're just being intentional, right? Mm. I yes. love that heart yeah. of being intentional about everything that you do is finding a way. You see what you just said, like, how can I find a way to bless someone else? Like, that is the generous heart. It's looking for opportunities to focus on others. Mm. It's a heart for others mm. to make a way for others. And I think God just, uh, I think I just feel, I feel the joy of God mm. as I live that way. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the, um, that reminded me of the time that um, we bought a bag full of candies to church one time. And, and then I gave it to our son. And then I said, like, um, here you go. This is a bag full of candies. Um you can share it with people. And at first he was holding on to it so tight. <laughs> he was like, no, this is all mine. <laughs> I want to eat them all. And then, but he got that bag for free, right? So yeah. I said, but mm. you know, like it's more fun to share it with your friends and people here. And then, and then uh, at first he was very reluctant, like, ah, oh, but I want this, but okay. Then, and, and then as he was starting to give those candies away, like I saw him excited and mm. he was actually running to people, giving them candies out. And I just thought that's kind of the thing that, you know, like really little practices can change. And yeah. 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 And he's really Still. generous now. Mm. Hey. Yeah, he's very generous. Yeah. 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 That's right. Mm. And that's something we've tried to incorporate into our home is, you know, every time that we give our children money, they have these envelopes mm. of um, missions um, yeah. into India, missions into Africa, um, and into kids' church. They have three different envelopes. And we just ask them, how much do you want to give into these before you go and spend your money? 
Cool. And um, just that practice that we've done for years, even yeah. when our kids were really small, mm. like two years old, um, we started doing that. And it's just made a real difference in their life to think more beyond themselves yeah. and think about blessing others. And, of course, as good parents, um, a good heart of a parent, like we, we want to bless them. When they do that, mm. when they're generous to others, we just want to bless them more. Mm. Right? So, yeah, so true. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, no, I totally get it. And I think, I think this comes really naturally. I don't know, maybe it's just me, like in finance. Like, yeah, right. top of our cousin and I, our budget, top is tithes. Next thing is like giving, like generosity. Like how can we be generous? But I think applying what you're saying to other areas, like being intentional. I love that with your kids or like encouragement or whatever your gifting is. Maybe it's music or maybe it's, but how can I use this intentionally? Yeah. Yep. Not just, just because it's there, it's going to naturally flow out. But like, okay, where's my opportunity to be generous with the gifting God has given me? Oh, it's hosting. It's it's social events. Okay, how can I be <laughs> intentional about hosting parties that are going right. to build people up and connect people yep. for Jesus, yep. for God's house? Yeah, and I love that. I, I think that's mm. maybe one of the key words you about to say is just being intentional with the, the the gifting, the grace God has placed in our lives. Yeah, whatever grace you have. Yeah, to, yeah. to be generous. Yeah, That's yeah. a cool picture. Our church and finance, because I think it's a question people have is how, how you know, how are we organizing finance and, you know, how do we feel about that? Um, that's a great question. Something that, you know, I'm really excited about mm. is um, we're never going to ask people to do things that we're not modeling ourselves as, as a leadership team. So, you know, we're committed to giving outside of our church. We're committed to tithing outside of our church. So giving the, the giving ten percent of everything that we receive to give it out into church planting, into missions, into um, reaching things that are outside of our church, mm. which basically means you know we're we're it is it's not necessarily going to bless us back um, uh, tangibly, but there's something about um, making a commitment to being mm. outward focused. That I feel like just God blesses. And if we're going to ask people yeah. to be generous, I think we need to model the way in generosity mm. uh, as a church. And we want to do that. And I hope that's a starting place. Mm. Um, Tim mentioned tithing. I think tithing is an incredible principle. We have tithed uh, our entire married life together and before that as singles. But let me just say a word about tithing. Tithing is not the goal. Mm. Generosity is is so much bigger than tithing. And sometimes I feel like um, Christians have used tithing as a tick the box to say, okay, I'm generous. I've paid my dues to God mm. and have actually, they actually have a stingy heart, but they tithe. And I just oh, think there's, I, I don't see Jesus coming and preaching the kingdom of tithing. Mm. I see Jesus yeah. coming and preaching the kingdom of God and being generous and everything I have belongs to God. Mm. Jesus challenges us to give his, give our whole life to him um mm. and many times in the in the bible pe people unloaded everything that they have for the yep. mission of god yep. so don't see tithing as a as a um as a one-stop shop for i've done my duty to god <laughs> that is not it i think what tithing actually is is tithing is a is a practice that gets us in the mindset of putting god first it doesn't end there. It begins there. Mm. Once you learn how to practically plan to put God first, you mentioned a budget, Tim. I love that. <laughs> um, top of the budget is I'm going to give this to God. Like I want to give a tithe to God. I want to give the first tenth to God. It basically tells my money God is first, yep. but that's yep. not the goal. Mm. It's like reading the Bible. We don't worship reading the Bible. We worship Jesus. And, and then mm. the Bible helps us get closer to Jesus and know Jesus. Yeah. Right? It's, tith it's the same with tithing. We're doing tithing um, not because um, we worship tithing. Mm. It's but because it helps us practically get closer towards a generous heart. Mm. Yes. But really we need to focus on Jesus and, 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 and getting that generous heart because um, it's, the kingdom of God is much bigger than tithing. And I think... Um, uh, yet God, God wants to do a, a business in your heart mm. much more than a percentage of your income. God wants everything. Um, I've heard people say, you give God the 10% and then, and then you get to keep the 90%. That's not the Bible. Right. That's not in the Bible. Right. 
No, everything belongs to God, mm. and we should give. I love what Pastor Chris Hodges says from from uh, Highland. He says, "I'm not asking you to give. I'm asking you to pray and ask God what you should give and do whatever He says." Mm. Yeah. And I yeah. know that God's not going to say, "Oh, I want you to give three percent," because that's that's God's not like going, like going backwards. Sure. You know what I mean? Like yeah, he's not yeah. like no. He's gonna say to you like when I've prayed about it, God's just said me to me many times. Like just increase it, <laughs> like give more, mm. give beyond, even beyond what I felt like I could give. I've I've stepped down in faith to to give, and God has given me got as like some extra business deal has come in where I've like gotten extra money or I've right. gotten some extra thing or whatever has happened. We've got surprised with money, right? This happens to us all mm. the time. Um, but it's connected to once you get into God's economy of generosity, like you just start seeing miracles happen. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not like um, give and then I res- it, like I'm give and get like I'm given to get like that is such a, a a different concept than the kingdom of God. It's like no, you step into the way God does things, and then you step into the way God does things. It's like and He yeah. does things like way bigger scale than you do. Yeah, you know so that's been my experience with God. Every time I'm generous, I become more like Jesus. I'm stepping more into the kingdom of God and his way of doing things. I just There's just so much blessing that surrounds God's way of doing things, mm. always and everything. So um, generosity is um, it's just amazing. Yeah, I like how you said um, like sometimes we, or most of the time, we, it's not just 90% that we keep, but we listen and obey. Like sometimes God mm. will tell us to um, give more. And we had some occasions when we were just married and, we had sometimes we really strongly felt that we wanted to just give beyond and above. And mm. s- to the point, sometimes we had to empty a bank account and it seemed crazy. <laughs> um, but that felt it was the right thing. And he never disappointed us. Like Actually, he always like blessed us so much. And yeah, right. But we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't say like everyone do the same at the same time. Like I think God can speak to each, each one of us in uh, different moments, key moments. And mm. I think the importance is just like obeying and... Do what God Trust, says. Trusting in Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's. Yeah. You, I think you nailed it, Zimmy. You do what God says. <laughs> yeah. Like this is the whole goal of following Jesus. It's the whole. It's the whole goal. If you know, we could get into how God works through the Old Testament. Mm. You know, why did God call Abraham righteous? It was because he listened and he obeyed. Yeah. Why did God call Noah righteous? Because he listened and he obeyed. That, that hasn't changed, guys. Mm. It's the same thing. When we look at the New Testament, you listen and you obey. That's the whole point is of the Bible is to get you to listen and obey. And now we get to generosity. Well, really, um, if God's asking you to give something and you're holding it back, yeah, uh, I, I just think you're missing um, so much of the plan of God for your life. And um, and so I, I, I'm just excited to give. Yeah, yeah. I mean... I mean, that whole text, I think we talked about forgiveness and in a yeah. previous pod we talked about like the rich, rich young ruler right? and how Jesus was asking about the finance, the money thing. It wasn't really about the money. <laughs> it was, mm. <laughs> right, it was about giving what each of us is called to give in our lives yeah. and be generous with, which is a different grace for different and people. And he probably had a massive gift of giving, but yeah. he didn't even realize it. Oh. Yeah, that's interesting, yeah. Like he ha- obviously had the gift of making money. Yeah. Which and if you've got the gift of making money, like freely rec- freely received, yeah. freely give, you, you, I'm sure you've got the gift of giving. Yeah. So you think some people have gift of giving? 100%. I mean, mm. Romans 12 talks about this. Mm. Um, motivation. You have a gift of giving. Um, but it's just like any muscle. If you don't exercise it, you won't find out Definitely. like how it can actually function. So... Um, mm, How do you, you think someone can find that they have a gift of giving? Like, it's a kind of like the urge to, um, like, they're really moved by giving moments. Or <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think I think it's just gonna like we talked about, like this joy mm. connected to your grace. Like that kara yeah. is connected to your charisma. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So that joy is connected to your to your gift. What What if it sometimes hurts a little bit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it's definitely hurts, but I think there's still joy. Yeah, yeah. Joy over. Like, like every time we've given, I mm. feel like mm. like we have a gift of giving. Um, mm. yeah. But every time we've given and it's hurt, like we've laughed all the way home. <laughs> we've just been so That's excited. True. Even there's been times when we've had to like empty our bank accounts and eat noodles so the church <laughs> could pay rent. 
Mm. I, I just thought it was a, just a joy. Yeah. Like we didn't tell anyone and we even loved that even more, just not telling anyone. <laughs> just like it was just fun. True. Yeah. And I, I don't know, like we had we had no kids at that time and we were single and we're happy to sort of like, <laughs> yes. you know. Yeah. But we really felt God asked us to do it and we did it. And, you know, it wasn't too long after that that we were basically, you know, given given um, a surprise inheritance and were able to buy a house. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's huge. <laughs> well, like, yeah, crazy. That's awesome. Yeah, well, I guess that whole story just makes me think of like 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 where God just says God loves a cheerful giver. Mm. And I guess that's the whole heart behind the generosity. Like, yeah, yeah maybe it'll hurt. Yeah, maybe it hurts a bit, but we're always doing it cheerfully. I love that laughing, laughing as we go home, um, <laughs> as we give our gifts. And I think yep. that's a great, a great sign that, yeah, you know, it's going to grow generosity in our lives. I also have a verse yeah. that helped me is, um, in Proverbs. Uh, it says like the world of generous gets larger and larger and the world of stingy gets smaller and smaller. And mm. yeah. and I've seen that in um, not just our lives, but other people's lives. And people who are generous just have more friends, um, more opportunities, just so much more joy. And and then when people who are stingy, are on, like they might have money at the beginning, but they're not happy. Um, their chances are limited, you know. So I was just yeah. thinking, what kind of life do I want? What kind of person I want to be? And and yeah. I, I, it's just more attractive to have a, a generous heart. So hope we mm. can model that to people and we have a church full of generous people with bigger world, I guess. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, one of, one of the other scriptures, um, we've just got lots of great scriptures in this <laughs> session, but um, in Galatians, I think it's I think it's Galatians 5, 8, maybe. I could be wrong. But in Galatians, <laughs> it's basically, it says like, um, do be generous um, especially to those in the family of faith. Mm. And I just I just think um, as a church, we want to be generous mm. to our church. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Not just right. ask the church to be generous to the church, but as a church, be generous to the church. Mm. Like taking care of people mm. in, yeah. the, in the family of faith. I think it should right. be, you know, a priority for us and mm. blessing people. It only takes a little bit. To make to really make a big difference in people's lives, you just don't realize it. You know yeah. the power mm. that you have in your hands right now, like buying somebody, like a, a poor student. You know, giving them mm. um, fifty bucks to be able to pay for their food and stuff when they have very little. Mm. Mm. Man, it's like it's like so impacting for someone's mm. life when you're just a little bit generous. Mm. Um, or, or maybe it's just like helping someone out who's, who's a single mom, mm. you know, picking them up yeah. to, to, if they don't have a car. Like it's just a small thing, but it's a big deal. Mm. You know what I mean? So I just feel like that's a picture of the kingdom of God. Like he's called us to be the people who are generous, who are, who are living our lives in a way that's being blessing to other mm. people is the way of the kingdom. Mm. And I just think... The church of the future has to be has to be intentionally generous. Mm. Yeah, we have to be if we're going to. Um, the, the Western church, the Western culture, is so cynical about so many things. Mm. Generosity cuts through so much cynicism. Yeah, I guess, and it can't be talk. Yeah, this is not, yeah. This is not talk. This is a. Uh, they need to see it. They Come to church and you'll it. see it. You'll yeah, feel yeah. it. Yeah, need to experience it. That's yep. real. Yeah, I love that. I, when I was seventeen. There was a guy in my church, older guy, three years older, really cool. And he would always jump in my car and like just sit with me. This older, he was just at the, almost finished uni, listened to music together and just encouraged me. And he was generous with his time. Mm. And that was a key reason why I ended up in Japan, which wow. is this older guy. He was a leader, just spent time, was really generous with his time and his encouragement. Mm. And a cool guy played bass <laughs> and like <laughs> just hanging out with this nerdy 17 year old. And that really yeah, got me to Japan where it got me into church planning and <laughs> into this whole new world. And just somebody with who was generous enough to just sit with a young person mm. and like hang out and be a model. And so I think that's that's it. It's like, okay, this is through life. We mm. experience generosity through life. Yeah. And I think I, I want to be a part of church that that does that. Absolutely. Yeah. And sure. I think generous people are going to be attracted to a church that's generous. Yeah, sure. And so. Well, yeah. when you were showing about the finance, 
um, it's just one part, but like as a church, we are committed to giving a portion of our finance out. That makes me more excited to give. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> me too. Not that I wasn't excited before, but you know <laughs> what I'm like, oh, okay, that's, I can build the church, yeah, but also we can be a part of something global or something, yep. some different missions that I could never do by myself. Mm, and right. that also, that just that bigger thing just makes me yep. more excited to give. Yeah, great. Awesome, man. That's good. It's good. Uh, we could talk about this conversation for <laughs> <specific> <laughs> hours because it's so yes. in our hearts. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's so in our exciting. lives, but um, we're going to finish here. I would just okay. encourage you to think about what's God asking you to be more generous in right now yeah. and listen and obey. Mm. Yeah, I love and that. you just will be shocked at how God uses your life in a powerful way if you would simply allow a generous heart to overflow into actions. Mm. So love you guys. Appreciate you. Um, have an amazing week. Can't wait to have you in church and to experience generosity and to invite you into being a generous person with, with us. Yeah. No. Is it me going to send us off? <laughs> Say goodbye to everyone. Well, thank you for joining today. <laughs> See you next week. See you guys. Bye. Appreciate you.